Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on another sunny day! Oh right, about that. <laughs> it has been raining since forever, and it's not going to let up, I don't think. But I have to say, we are looking mighty fine with all our new bling. We got our nice silver necklace and that cool bracelet on the same hand I'm using to hold my torch. Boy, do we look cool or what? Anyway, today is going to be, as promised, a day about tackling something to do with underground. And that is, I want to add some lights underground that are more permanent than our torches, because those are very much not permanent. And I want to do that so we can have sort of a nice, safe passage down there. But I'm also kind of thinking, like, that's a rather large area to light up. So I was kind of considering, if I can bring back the mini-map, there we go. So I was thinking that we could maybe drill straight down, or maybe straight up, from these translocators right here. Because we already have a direct-to-surface connection for this one over here. So I'm not as worried about this one, because, again, we can just... Boop! We're here. So, that one, I think, but we do want to have some kind of lighting here for the path down. I don't think we need to worry about lighting up the hole downstairs if we can make a straight shot, a straight shoot right from here down to the TLs right below. So if we're doing light, that means we're going to need to do either oil lamps or lanterns. And lanterns are what I want to get to today. In fact, this whole episode is going to be about things that start with L, because there are some other L-related things I want to get to. Specifically, I want to put some light on the walls here, because I keep forgetting to. We'll light you out here too to keep creepy crawlies from spawning. And I want to get to leather working so that we can finally, here it is, we can finally make our recurve bow out of this bow stay we dried two episodes ago. And because leather takes a while to do, I think we should go ahead and get started on that first. And in order to get started on leather, we need to start with some barrels. And that means wood and sticks. Now, leather working has three stages. You're going to first soak your raw hides, which are these guys here, in lime water or borax water. Now, we don't have borax, I and mean, we do downstairs, but we can't mine it yet. However, we have some lime from our ruin that we found up here, as well as some lime from the translocators, giving us actually a neat stack. Wow, that was <laughs> serendipitous. Once you've soaked your hides in lime water for about a day, it's like 20 hours, I think, then you need to process it through two steps of tanning. You use weak tannin and you use strong tannin. And so you want to have typically three barrels, because while you are soaking them for the first time in the lime water, you want to go ahead and start working on the tannins, because they actually take time to process into the water. So let's go ahead and let's get started with blue three barrels. They are made like this. And they do not stack. So, beware. And I am kind of thinking, actually, you know what? These are going to be real stinky. I mean, not really, but, you know, in real life, tanning is stinky work. I'm thinking we should put these outside here. So let's go ahead and pick up these guys. We'll do them like, yeah, here. There we are. Now, in order for lime water, you need to have, well, water. And that is why we have this bucket, which we never even made, but we found it, which is perfect. And we're going to right-click on some water, pick up the water, and you'll see that you do not pick up the whole block of water, unlike some other block games. And then we're going to come over here and right-click into this bucket. Now, normally, if you want to place a water source, and you have water in a bucket, then you need to you can't just right-click. You won't do anything. If you crouch and right-click, you will place the bucket. You have to sprint and right-click. I'm actually going to do that over, I think, right here. Because I want to have a nice, easy place to keep filling these so I don't have to run back and forth from our farms to here. But if you sprint, in my case, shift, right-click, then you can place a new block of water. And it becomes a source. So we're going to do this five times for our lime water bucket, or barrel. And I'm going to go ahead and fill up these two barrels with water, also to 50 liters. There we go. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put the bucket back down over here. Now, in order to create lime water, you need to have one lime per liter of water. So we're going to drop 14 of these and put 50 lime right in here, and it will instantly turn into 50 liters of lime water. And then we're going to take some raw hides, and I think we're going to go with the mediums. We could do mediums or huge. Let's see how many huge we can do. I have never actually processed huge before, I don't think. But let's see, we can put one, and it will tell you, we'll turn it into one soaked hide huge after 20 hours of sealing. We can do two, three, four, five, five. Okay, let's do five then. We'll go ahead and seal that, and we'll come back in 20 hours. Now, in the intervening time, we need to make tannin. And tannin is made with a couple options. Up here, we only have one option. We have to go and find an oak tree, and I know there's one in the darkness over that away. And we're going to take some oak, get some oak logs, and we're going to put them into these other barrels and seal them. We'll seal them first for one day to make weak tannin, and then this one will seal for an additional three days with more oak logs. And hopefully, the timing should work out so that when this is ready, then our hides will also be ready and coming out of the weak tannin. Because we're going to go from here to the weak tannin, to the strong tannin, and then we'll have leather. In the meantime, though, because it is so dark, I'm going to have a bite to eat. And then I think I'm going to sit in some water over here. Because I got some chert gravel to pan through. Because in order to make lanterns, we need glass. And we only have enough for, what, four lanterns, because you need two glass per lantern. You can use clear quartz in place of glass. If we had actual glass, like from the windows, which we could pull these in the windows out if we wanted to, we could do that, and each block of glass would give us one lantern's worth of glass. But I think for now, because we are poor and I am cheap, we're going to pan for some more clear quartz, and hopefully I'll get maybe a few more pieces. I don't actually know if we can use the clear quartz glass slabs or not, but we do now have the ability to saw these, and actually, that's what we could do. We could pull out all of our windows, saw them in half, replace the windows so they'll look a little better with some depth, and then have extra glass left over for our lanterns. Kurzar, you're a genius! Yep, that's what we're doing. So you know what? We're going to put you back in here. We're going to knock out... start with these guys here. So to saw your glass in half, all you do is put it in your crafting grid with your saw to the right of it specifically. It doesn't work any other way, which is kind of weird to me. And we get glass slabs. And these we can put here vertically. And if we do the same thing over here, we'll have these nicer looking windows because they add a little bit more depth to what we have going on here. And of course, we'll have the extra glass. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of our windows, and then I'll see all of you in the morning when it is time to go and get us some oak. I lied. Okay, only partly. So I was thinking, and I did get some panning done, but I was thinking as the morning drew on that there is something we could do as far as getting ourselves ready for our lanterns. And I had thought I was recording, and I wasn't, so I went and started talking to myself, and no one heard me. But what I did was I came down here, and I started moving our storage vessels up to a little shelf made of maple wood, and I put our first barrel down here, well, our fourth barrel, but first down here, and I want to show you how to better store honey, because I'm going to have some honey with me. Here we go. So we can process honey right into a bowl, like this, but each bowl only holds up to five pieces of honey worth, or one liter at a time, which is kind of a big bowl, honestly. And that would mean we'd have to pick up the bowl and empty it into the barrel every time. And that's because we can't process the honey right into the barrel, which is kind of weird to me, but okay, whatever. This is squeeze. Nope, can't do it. However, if we go and pick up a bucket from upstairs, we can process honey into a bucket just fine, and the bucket will hold 10 liters of honey, not just one. So we can process probably all the honeycomb that we have into the bucket, empty it into the barrel, and then we will have tons of honeycomb left over, or beeswax, for making candles. 
And given how much beeswax we have, I think we can make some candles and have some leftover for other things. So I'm going to go ahead and process the rest of this honeycomb into here, toss it into the barrel, and then we're going to go out and we're going to actually look for an oak tree. Oh, finally done. Okay, there we go. It's the last batch of honeycomb. We have 24 liters of honey. Not too shabby. Now, I did actually go and harvest what I could of our apiary over there, but we're actually out of cattails now. So we are done with that. But we have almost four stacks of beeswax. That is a ton of beeswax. That is so good for us. Go ahead and store this here. Now, I do know that there are some wolves hanging out over by the trees, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up our arrows again and our bow. There you are. And we're going to take that with us. And you know what? Let's take along our copper axe, too. We'll use the flint one first, but we'll take the copper one to continue our dirty work. So let's see. Oak trees. I can see two here. So there's one right there. And one right there. You can tell from these sort of somewhat more brown trunks. Now, do I see any bears? Wolves I can handle. Bears, not so much. Of course, there are also, what, three wolves here? Yep. One, two, and three. And a pile of bones. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to... We'll start with the spears first. Oop. Alright, move on to the arrows. Oh, I guess he saw me or something. Let's go ahead and start peppering you guys with arrows if we can. Oh, there's four wolves up there. Wow. This thing is not accurate. Okay, well. There's five wolves over there. My goodness. Come on, bow. There we go. Okay. Well, we have a few arrows left. Oh, there's the pup. Ah, there's one right there, too. There we go. Okay. Are there any... Oh, wait. You're a live one, too, aren't you? Okay, I want to count those. That was a ton of wolves. Is that one there, too? Or are you a pig? Guess we're about to find out. That's a boar. Okay, whew. And that... is a rift. Okay, I think we got them all, though. Guess we'll find out in a minute if any of them sprint. Oh, there's one! Whoa-hoo-hoo! -hoo. I don't know why you're not chasing me, but okay. Okay, well, that took a while. I ended up having to track down and take out the last two wolves. It was a wolf and her pup. But we are finally back. That was a total of six wolves and two pups, by the way. It was nuts. We are back, and we have shears. And so our first task here is we're going to find the oak trees. Let's look at that. Done. And we're going to shear some of these away because we don't want to have to come to the forest every time we want you know, oak wood. So we're going to shear these, and we're going to look for some acorns to bring back with us, so that we can then replant them and have oak trees growing, you know, where we can get to them without quite as much threat of wolves or bears and such. And the acorns, here we go. The acorns are little green nuts you'll see on the ground. They are absolutely tiny, but against the sort of fall colors, they actually contrast pretty nicely. So we're going to get some of these. All right, so there we go. And with that, we bring down our oak tree. And there we go. Now, some of these oak trees have a lot of wood in them. That one gave us a stack and six, so 22 by itself. That's a pretty good haul. They actually get quite a bit larger than that, too. But for now, this will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and spend some time getting some sticks and some acorns and some more wood. And I'll meet all of you back at the house. Ooh, here we go. Like, this tree right here. 
This is an inventory filling tree. Yes, that would be a very nice one to take down. But yes, I'll see all of you in a little bit. Alright, folks, we are back. And we have three and over a half stacks of oak logs. And we also have five huge soaked hides. Cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to refill our barrel here. And we are going to put five oak logs in each of these and seal them for 24 hours. Dunzo. And when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to pull these out of here, we'll scrape them with a knife, and we'll tuck them in here. And in the meantime, I think we can go ahead and get started on some lanterns. But I think we're going to have to do that in the morning because I have something special I want to do with these lanterns. And it involves something that's not copper, but still a metal. So, I'll see all of you in the morning, and we will head out on a bit of an expedition. Just a brief one, though. Alright, good morning, everyone. It is our first, I guess, sleet or something of the season. It's not quite hail, not quite rain either. We're going to head out here, and we're going to go and dig up some of the lead that we've marked that we found several episodes ago. We have some up on the ridge here, and then some up in this sort of desert area up here. Not really a desert, because it's not super duper hot, but it is pretty gross and dry. So, I'm going to see you up by the lead, and we're going to get into alloying when we get back home. Alright, folks, here we are. Here we have our lead ore bits. I'm kind of surrounded by fire clay. I don't really want the fire clay at the moment, so I'm going to try to avoid it if we can. Just kind of dig under here to we're underneath it. And we'll drop a ladder here. Here we go. Go one more over. Oh, and it's right here, and it's Bountiful Lead. Wow, all right. So this is Lead Ore, a.k.a. Galena. And we're going to get some of this, in fact, as much of it as we can possibly carry, and take it home to alloy with our copper. Now, in the first season of the guide series, especially in the first half or so of it, I was very pro Molybdo Chalcos, as far as lanterns go. Melodotacos is a sort of dark, black, kind of somewhat mottled alloy of copper and lead, and it works really well for lanterns. Now, for our first lanterns of this season, I am going to make them out of Melodotacos, but I think in general I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with the choices I make in terms of lantern materials, because I do think I want to play with different materials for lanterns just to see, you know, how they look. So, yep. This is lead ore in chert. I'm going to get this deposit, and then I'm going to head up to this chert desert here and get these three nodes. But I think after I clear this out, I'm also going to take a very quick tip tap with the prospecting pick. One, to see what's here, and wow, this is a big deposit of lead. And then I'm also going to tap with the node search mode to see if there's anything else near the surface here. These sedimentary rocks, like chert, often have their ores closer to the surface than, say, granite would, because these stone types really only appear near the surface, so you're really only going to find their ores near the surface. So, while I did mention in the last episode that you don't really want to randomly go through caves to just see what's there with the node search radius, you certainly can, and sometimes because you get that sort of bit of radar into the stone around you, it can still be handy to do sometimes. Especially if you know you're in an area that's rich with some kind of particular material. And this has bismuth, hematite, galena, native copper, and alum, all in very small amounts. Okay, so we probably won't find anything with a node search, but may as well. So trace galena, that's probably just leftovers from this particular node here, and trace galena. So we probably have a couple pieces of galena still sitting around, but probably not enough to worry about and wear our pickaxes down with. Yeah, I'm not really interested in just picking up church stones. So, yep, that's about it for getting galena. I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, get these 
deposits here, and then I'll see all of you back at home. Now, everybody stay calm. Stay calm. But, you see here, I was giving our little tippy tap, and we found some sphalerite nearby in medium amounts. Now, sphalerite is a zinc ore, and if we have zinc and we have copper, we can make brass in addition to molybdochalcos. So I think it might be worth it to maybe dig around here and see if we can find it. I think we're pretty close to the sphalerite right here. So let's go ahead. We're going to dig out this way a little bit. Maybe down right here. Still medium. Okay. I'm going to poke around for a little bit and we will see where we find this sphalerite. Aha, there it is. There's our sphalerite. I'll go ahead and make a little staircase down to it. So this is sphalerite in chert. You'll see these sphalerite bits have a little sort of grayish tone to them. And just a warning, if you are in a granite area and it says there's a lot of sphalerite around, it will be very hard to find it because only these black bits, these sort of darker bits here, will stand out in the granite. So keep a very sharp eye out if you're looking for zinc in granite. But it's easy enough for us to spot this here, so I'm going to go ahead and mine this out. And then as promised, I will bring all of this stuff back to base after I do some inventory juggling. And we will talk about alloying and actually do some of it. All right, folks, we are home at last. You can see it is the next day. And uh, I, I may have overdone it on the Galena. I just might have. We have, let's see, two full stacks of Bountiful Galena, which is seven pieces or nuggets per chunk. We have one stack of rich chunk of Galena, which is five pieces per chunk. And then we have uh, just over a fifth and about a fifth of a stack of Bountiful and Rich Galena on top of that. So we are swimming in lead ore, and we got a pretty nice amount of sphalerite. So I'm going to go ahead and put these things away and get our inventory settled, and then we're going to go ahead and get us smelting again. Okay, we are ready to get to smelting, but before we do, we have one thing we need to process here. Actually, two things. Let's go ahead, we're going to grab five more pieces of oak going to take this barrel of weak tannin and put this in here and after another day of sealing it will have turned into strong tannin. Now we take these soaked hides and we take our knife over top of them and we scrape them. So we now have five huge scraped hides and those we dunk right into the weak tannin and we seal for three days. There we go. Now, on to the smelting, and specifically the alloying. So alloying, of course, is when you take two elemental metals, and you combine them together, and they have new properties. New colors, new durability, ductility, and so on. I'm going to grab our hammer. We're going to smash these up. Now, we're going to do two alloys today. There are many very useful ones, and some that are purely decorative. These are going to be mostly decorative alloys today that we're dealing with. I want to make basically as many ingots of molybdochalcos as I can here, which I think is 2, 4, 6, 8, 20. That might be a little much, but we'll see. Now, in order to make molybdochalcos, we're going to go over here to the Galena Nugget in the handbook, check out the lead ingot, and then click on molybdochalcos ingot. You'll see it takes 8 to 12 percent copper and 88 to 92 percent lead. So we're going to go ahead and do some fancy math, and we're going to put as many Galena Nuggets in here as we can, and then try to figure out how to get just enough copper ingots in there so that we have used the least amount of Galena as possible. All right, so we need two stacks of 128, one stack of 96, and then 48 native copper and that is about as efficient as you can get for use of Galena for making molybdochalcos. 
This will give us 20 ingots, which will be enough for 10 plates, because each plate is 2 ingots. We're not making 10 plates tonight, but we will get underway as far as making sure we can process more later. Go ahead and we will preheat this, and then we'll go ahead and pour them out. Now, it's important to note that when you're making an alloy, the type of fuel you use is dependent on the elemental metal in the alloy with the highest smelting temperature. Now, lead smelts at 327 Celsius, so we can actually smelt lead with just wood. And when you do that, you actually see the crucible and things won't actually glow, or at least not that much. The copper, however, of course, requires 1084C, so we are going to have to use some of our coal in here in order to smelt this. All right, here we go, folks. I'm going to need some tongs for this. There we go. Look at that bright yellow glow. Ah, yes. I love their chalcos. Look how much more yellow it is compared to the copper. It's sort of an orangey color when it's all smelted. And there we have it. Check them out. They're already starting to cool. So we'll come back in a little bit. I'm going to go take a rest. And hopefully these will be cooled by the time we are back. Okay, we are back and we have 20 cold ingots of Limpid Chalcos. All right. There we go, and check those out. See how they're kind of like a gray, but they're kind of modeled with copper? This is the effect you'll get on the lanterns when you make them. So we're gonna go ahead and start our first set of plates of Melibda Chacos. Okay, here we go, glowing faintly pink. And we're going to start a plate. Now you'll notice that we didn't get an option for anything else. These, or this specific alloy, can only be made into plates. Now, plates, as I said, require two ingots of material. And you'll see here, we have to smash them all around into all these green voxels here. In order to add more ingots, all you do is take your existing one, crouch, and add your second one. And you can add them up to three ingots high, any higher than that, and you will start losing material off the top because the game just doesn't support adding more. Now, with doing plates, I recommend starting with some heavy hits because they can move multiple boxes at once, so it's a bit more efficient, typically. There we go. And I have to hit these out from here just to spread them out a bit and get these guys moving too. And there we are. And then smash these down from the corners and the sides. There we go. And sort of, sort of hit the middle here to spread these voxels out. And then I will start pushing these over. There goes our hammer. Let's get a fresh one out here. And then we split at long last. And we have our very first Melibdo Chacos plate. And you can see now why I said we're not going to be making 10 of them today, because they are a real pain to make. Now I'm going to go ahead and make these two. And then we'll get on with the rest of the process for making our lanterns. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So, now that we have our plates, we can come over here and we'll take two candles. And we will do, of course, clear glass. Some folks like the milkier color of the clear quartz. And in fact, there is a reason to use some of this, and I'll show you why. So we're going to put our plates in here, put our candles here, and we will make one Molybdo Chacos Lantern. Look, look how bright that is. 
even in daylight, it illuminates our house so much better. Look at that. It's also a much yellower light, sort of yellow-white rather than orange. So it will make things look different than what we might be used to, given that we've been running around with torches all the time. Anyway, the reason that I said it might be useful to have some foggy lanterns, or at least one, is that this way they don't stack. And you'll see here, if I place them side by side, this one's sort of a milky color, and this one is not. I mean, it's still somewhat milky, but it's definitely clearer. When you have a lantern in your hand, in your offhand, and you are trying to place lanterns and pick them up, if they stack back into your offhand, it can be really annoying. I've dealt with that a lot myself. And I generally like to use the clear lanterns for decoration. I don't really have much of a preference for what lantern goes in my offhand. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to keep this foggy glass lantern, and I will use these clear glass lanterns for decoration and illumination. So what we can do here is I want to finally give our house some real illumination. Let's ditch that torch and, you know what, we'll just leave you there. Why not? And now we never have to come back and refresh the torches in our house because this lantern will light up the whole place by itself. Now let's talk about the second alloy, which is brass, because we're going to make two brass plates as well. But we're going to do something different with them. And in this case, we are indeed just doing two. So let's go ahead and see. I don't think we have enough sphalerite here on us. But let's find out. Oh, we have exactly enough. Okay. Great. In that case, once again, we need to make sure we're using hot enough fuel to smelt our copper. And so we're going to start with the usual preheat. And I'll see all of you when we have the brass ready to go in our forge. Okay, now that our bush meat is finally running out, I am making a pot of stew, actually porridge. In the meantime though, let's go ahead and get our brass ingots on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, again, hammer out two of these. These being specifically plates. Because we're going to make a brass torch holder. In fact, we'll make two, because the recipe makes two. Basically one plate per torch holder. And again, brass is another one of those alloys where the only thing you can do with it is make plates. So once again, we will not get a menu of what to create. We're going to go ahead and do this. And this is why I don't like the offhand tongs thing, is that you can't also have a light in your hand while you're hammering. Just, it makes recording better and all that stuff. And sure, you can put light down, but the light kind of changes between when you have it in your hand versus when it's like on the wall somewhere much brighter in the hand. And there we go. Two brass plates. And if we stack them in our crafting grid like this, we've got two brass torch holders, which we can now place on the wall. And if we do, we can put a torch in it. Now, what use is that, you might ask? We can already put torches on the wall. Well, actually, in a torch holder, torches will never go out. We could even put the torches out here in the rain and it wouldn't go out. On top of that, you can also right click them out of the torch holder and put them back in, which makes them handy for having near your forge or near anything else that you tend to light on a frequent basis. I like to keep them near forges, near kilns, and sometimes in the kitchen too. I think for now I'm going to go ahead and probably put the second one over here by our kiln and keep the nice sort of outdoorsy glow of the torches. And that, my friends, is how you do modern lighting. And now we have no lights anywhere in our house that require attention. These will never go out, our lanterns last forever, and even our little oil lamps, as weak as they are, are still here. Now, we only have the two lanterns right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a few more so that we can take some downstairs with us and put them in the translocators and also to have a couple more to illuminate the areas around our house because 
Strong light will keep rifts from spawning nearby. It's not a huge radius, but at least it should keep rifts from spawning right outside our walls. I'll see all of you in a little bit when I am ready with those lanterns. Alright folks, we are done with these plates for now. We need to make a couple more candles here. And then grab some more glass. We're going to go ahead and make... Oop. Really, I can't even put them in here. Interesting. Okay, tongs it is. There we go. We have four more lanterns. Now, I think... Actually, I know. One of them's going to go here. And you know what? I might even pick this one up and just put one out here because... Look how bright it is in here. We don't need another light in here. So I think that's what we'll do. In this way, this will illuminate our farm a little bit better. These will still provide a bit more light outside the farm over here. And then this one will illuminate the back between our back door and where these lights are. I might even move you down a little bit. Like down to here. For symmetry and also to keep at least some rifts at bay. Okay, now the next thing I want to do in order to wrap this up is we're going to go and install some of these lights down with our translocators. I think we might need a pickaxe to help clear the way here and there. And I'm also going to bring along some wooden fences and I'm also going to make some gates. So we're going to need to make a couple of those, not with the shears, with the saw. There we go. And gates are made just like fences, just in reverse. So, there we go. And you know, I'm going to just start with one. I'll bring the rest of the materials with me. And I think I also want to make some crude doors. And actually, you know what? Since it's getting cold, we're going to actually replace these doors with, I'm thinking, some oak ones. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So, in order to make nicer doors, you need some boards. And you can arrange them in your inventory like this, or a crafting grid like this. And you'll get solid doors. These provide better insulation than these. In fact, these don't provide any insulation. So, we're going to go ahead and replace these with some oak doors. I picked them for their color, actually. Oh, not quite that side. Let's go ahead and we'll install them from inside. That way, they reside on this side of the wall. There we go. And the reason being is that I want to use these doors down where we may have to be able to see through them for drifters, because we obviously can't see through these doors. Now there is another kind of door, the sleek door. Here we go. The sleek door has windows in it, but these can only be purchased from traders and not the aged doors, only the birch and other common materials. So, we now have some new doors in our house. I don't like them as much, visually, honestly. But, they will keep us warmer in winter because these actually seal the house now. We have a house that is smaller than 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven in all dimensions. In fact, it is exactly 7 blocks tall on the inside and 7 blocks long. And we now have solid doors, so we will stay warmer in winter. But, let's go ahead and get our armor on, actually. We just need some of this, just in case we encounter anything bad down there. And I want to make just enough room for bringing along a couple other odds and ends. Namely, some temporal gears. I think we should go ahead and activate two of these and see where they go. And I hope all of you are as excited as I am. Alright, so let's get over here. Our first TL that we're going to light up is right down here. So let's get in here. And yeah, we're going to need... Well, you know what? Let's not light it up up there. Let's just go down here. And we're going to situate a lantern there. In addition, I'm going to wall off, or at least board off with these fences these entrances here, and then also probably something a bit, I don't know, maybe like this, and then 
right here we'll put our fence gate. There we go. They'll still be able to throw stones at us, but at least they won't be able to hit us. And that's what's important. So how is that lit? That works okay, I think. Oh, I was going to put a fence here like that, too. There we go. Alright, so I think it is time for us to go ahead and repair this translocator. And we are going to go ahead and do that now. So right click with your temporal gears. Since we are a clockmaker, we only require two, not three. And when it says space time subduction completed, you know it's ready. Now, if you have motion sickness issues, I suggest you close your eyes until you hear the sort of boom and then wait a second or two. So we're going to go ahead and get our lantern out and our shield as well. And we're going to step on this and go on through. And we ended up somewhere... Somewhere wild. Somewhere a bit south of home, too, no less. That's pretty cool. We're not too, too far from home, but it's still an interesting place. Cool. And we have bauxite here. And so many other cool things. Yes. Yes, this is what we want. Oh, and we have a painting in here. And we have another chest somewhere. We have two chests. Oh, wow. <gasps> and we have a broken blaggard helm. Wow. Okay. Cool. That's neat. We're going to leave this here for now. But we will come back and we will absolutely ransack this place. Soon. Very soon. For now, let's go back and we're going to fix up another transicator. I think what I'm going to do is, you know what, we're going to actually go in from underneath. We are going to go head down here and we will fight our way through whatever drifters are in our way here. Hopefully not too many. And we are going to try to find... Here we go. It was this way, past the borax, and right through here. Here we go. Okay, so we have that fenced off there. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. There we go. We're just going to put a door right there. Now, these are kind of far apart. I was hoping to get them with one lantern, but I don't think we're going to. So we will just set one lantern right about here. And a second one yeah, right over here, like that. As I recall, we didn't really need anything else down this way, but just in case we do want to return there, I am going to put a door here somewhere. I'll do it right there. There we go. All right, and which one to repair? Uh, I guess it's just going to be this one. Doesn't really matter which. So, warping space-time. And subduction completed. That was quick. And in we go. Boom. Oh, wow, we are, like, due south of home. <sighs> With black coal here. Oh, yes, please. Absolutely. Let's take a quick peek out here. In addition to black coal, we're actually pretty close to the surface. And we're in claystone. Not too shabby. Okay. We don't really have a way up here, though. Let's, uh... Take a look at that real quick. Oh, here comes trouble. Hi, buddy. Get out of here. Let's go ahead and make our way out of here. And just see if there's a quick way to the surface or not. We may have to just dig. You know, I'll take you. Why not? So this way is useless. There we go. And down here is... Uh, 
also useless. Okay. A double dead end. So we will just make a path to the surface here when we come through. But black coal, man. That's great. Oh, you know what I didn't bring? is a pro pick. That's what I should have brought to these places. And anything fun in here? Ooh. Ten more gears. Don't mind if I do. We'll take you. Some more sphalerite. Why not? More gears. I'll leave the extra bits there. And then we should have some metal parts here. There we go. And yeah, okay, so let's get home. I need to go home and eat real quick. So let's get through here. And we are going to... Urf. Going to get stuck, apparently. Let's just carve a way up here with our pickaxe and some ladders. And we will just start getting to the surface from here. And there we go. Oh, we're getting a little wounded from our starvation. Let's go grab a bite to eat. Alright, everyone, we are home. And it's actually not raining and it's bright out, which is nice. And I think we're going to call the episode there because we still have about a day and a half on this tannin. And then it's going to take, I think, five days soaking in the strong tan before we get our leather. So we're not going to have our bow in this episode, but that's okay because we're not going adventuring right away anyway. So yes, we will finish up our leather working, but at least you know how the process works now. So with that, this concludes our episode of things that start with L. Lights, lamps, lanterns, and leather. Galore. The L is in the middle of galore, so it still counts, right? Right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little escapade, and also our first foray through some translocators. Neither of them took us too, too far away, but they are still a good distance, so that'll help open up the world for us a bit as we explore for new resources and new terrain. In the next episode, I think we need to bring our focus home a bit, and we need to start getting ourselves ready for winter for realsies. We've done a little bit with these doors here, but we need to actually get ready with our food, and some other preparations as well. So, I hope you're looking forward to that. As always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.